Well, hello. Today I'd like to uh, talk about the old hymn, In the Garden, which is a tremendously popular hymn. Uh, and and uh, for me, you know, it speaks very personally, uh, it, uh, the whole context of the hymn. You, you know, you come into the presence of the Lord in the garden in the morning, and he speaks to you. And it, it certainly uh, connects for me personally to my uh, daily devotional life where I get up in the morning the first thing I do is is sit down and have time with the Lord and uh, and he shows up so so that's how it it is and and it's a tremendously popular hymn uh, whenever I talk to people about old music or old hymns they they off many of them a great number will will say oh in the garden is my favorite hymn and it may be yours and we we kind of picture the the composer of the song, you know, walking through his private garden and the Lord speaks to him in the presence of all that beauty and nature and he writes this song. That's not at all how it went, uh, which is amusing uh, because we often think, uh, you know, that, that nature spoke to him somehow. And that's not it. It's the Lord that spoke to him. And, and the garden is a spiritual garden, uh, not a physical one. And, and actually, according to his granddaughter, uh, he wrote the song in, the ba in a basement room without a window. <laughs> so it was a dark room, and he'll talk about that. I'm going to read from this book. I have 101 hymn stories. I don't get all my information about hymns from it, but there are a lot of great stories in here. And uh, I'm using this today because the, the author of the song, Austin C. Austin Miles, um, wrote a piece of it himself, and I'd very much like to read that. But it, let's set the stage. It, it says this, It was about 1912 that music publisher Dr. Adam Jebel asked C. Austin Miles to write a hymn text that would be sympathetic in tone, breathing tenderness in every line, one that would bring hope to the hopeless, rest to the weary, and downy pillows to the dying beds. A beautiful way of wording that, and certainly uh, C. Austin Miles accomplished that. But these are his words of how he came up with this hymn, and and I thought, what a what a what better way than to look at the history of this song than to, to see it in his own words and and understanding that. It was a song he was commercially commissioned to write. And sometimes we think that takes the inspiration out of things, but it doesn't have to. So according to C. Austin Miles, he says this, One day in March 12th, I was seated in the dark room where I kept my photographic equipment and organ. I drew my Bible toward me. It opened at my favorite chapter. John 20, whether by chance or inspiration, let each reader decide. That meeting of Jesus and Mary had lost none of its power to charm. As I read it that day, I seemed to be part of the scene. I became a silent witness to the dramatic moment in Mary's life when she knelt before her Lord and cried, Rabboni. My hands were resting on the Bible while I stared at the light blue wall. As the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of a garden. Looking down a gently winding path, shaded by olive branches, a woman in white, with head bowed, hand clasping her throat as if to choke back her sobs, walked slowly into the shadows. It was Mary. As she came to the tomb upon which she placed her hand, she bent over to look in and hurried away. John in flowing robe appeared, looking at the tomb. Then came Peter, who entered the tomb, followed slowly by John. As they departed, Mary reappeared. Leaning her head upon her arm at the tomb, she wept. Turning herself, she saw Jesus standing. So did I. I knew it was he. She knelt before him with arms outstretched and looking into his face, cried, Rabboni. I awakened in full light, gripping the Bible with muscles tense and nerves vibrating under the inspiration of this vision I wrote what quickly as the words would be formed, the poem exactly as it has since appeared. That same evening, I wrote the music. So what a beautiful um, story about the origin of this song in the garden. Now, I'm going to tell you a little extra thing uh, I'm going to do 
it's not really about hymn history. It's just a little something for guitar players if they're interested. On the second verse and the second rendering of the chorus, I'm only going to use D chord progression in different places. So I'm going to have a D here. Well, I'm capoed at the first fret, so it's a half a step up, which makes a D sharp. And this would make this G sharp and then A sharp. And so I'm going to use the D chord, D7 chord, and a D minor chord. But I've brought it up the scale, so it's actually like an E sharp minor, which is F minor. And, um, and then this chord, I don't know what it is. Uh, I use it a lot. And I remember one day I was playing it, and my nephew said, Uncle Charles, what chord is that? I said, I don't know, but it sounds good there. And then he told me, and I've since forgotten, it's like D, K sharp, M minor, something, I don't know. It's not really relevant to me, but if you know, um, I'd certainly be, I, I think I'd be interested. Um, I think the name of the chord's less important than where you use it. So anyhow, with that, let's do In the Garden. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was fun to do. Lord bless you. We'll see you next time.